start sir hmm. so okay uh, uh, good good evening to everyone right just hold on yes uh, so far uh, students have not joined yet right but uh, anyway let me start so in the in the past live session past live session uh, just one small correction regarding that question paper right actually this time i have uh, make one correction first live session by mistake i told that one mark question will be there but uh, your this year there will be no one mark question there will be 30 questions for two marks each and eight questions of five marks so total 100 right so in that way instead of uh, if you take uh, in the uh, compared to last year this time number of questions are less but uh, your two marks question 30 questions for two marks and uh, your uh, eight questions for five marks so total 100 marks now regarding uh, regarding your uh, this thing i think somebody wrote or sent mail that whether negative marking will be there or not right so there will be no negative marking this is one thing there will be no negative marking so freely you can answer and another thing is uh, somebody has written that what will be the best book uh, for something of dialectical design and estimation not related to fundamentals of electrical engineering so this uh, answer uh, i know i should not give it but if you have uh, if you send me mail personally then definitely i will get back to you right so this is one thing and up to your what you call just let me have a look uh, uh, and somebody is not joined yet but he has written one question right this is not related to fundamentals of electrical engineering uh, he was he is writing that what are the upcoming opportunities for an electrical engineering students in the sector of space and research organizations, right? This is not, I am not supposed to answer this question here, uh, but uh, uh, but uh, your what you call that one can, uh, one can uh, send mail to me uh, and there I can, I can answer, but this is not that platform that I will uh, give that answer. Now some, uh, I think there are no other questions, but uh, I think up to eight assignment you have done, right? Those who will later maybe recorded version, you will go through this. So those uh, up to, I think up to DC transient you have done and then your AC circuit, single phase AC circuit will start, right? So uh, I mean, st starting from the fundamentals and how the complex number is involved in that your what you call in the analysis of AC circuit details are explained for single phase circuit first, right? And when you will go through this, uh, one important aspect I would like to tell that please see that how do we calculate actually uh, your power for single phase AC circuit. And then when you will go for three phase, please see that how power is computed and just uh, find out the difference for although single phase AC circuit as well as three phase AC circuit, but single phase AC circuit, when you try to compute the power, see the derivations. And for three phase also, after that, when you study, see the three phase of power, your what you call derivation of the power and that you see, right? And another thing is that, that somebody, uh, your what you call that your electrical, um, uh, this thing, that single phase AC circuit when you will come, that you will learn uh, first thing to all these complex number operations. Then you will see, I mean, your, those who are studying, those who have taken this course uh, first time, for them it will be really helpful. And after that, you see that how complex number is involved. Then uh, in during that uh, recording of that course, I, I have, perhaps I have explained that what is the difference between phasor and vector because you have to draw the phasor diagram so phasor is a rotating vector actually, right? And there, there when you are computing that your by calculator, of course, that your computation time is increasing because of uh, complex number, right? In the in the single phase AC circuit, and when single phase AC circuit phasor diagram, everything you learn correctly, and that power, your real power and reactive power, all have been defined, and it is there. 
then uh, what one can do is that after that i think uh, resonance resonance uh, has been covered so resonance is a very very simple thing for any electrical circuit single phase circuit when you'll see that when voltage and current are in same phase at that time you'll find resonance uh, resonance will occur but what is resonance uh, whatever you have uh, whatever has been explained for the resonance that you are uh, at that time you will see that things are very interesting and many other things have been explained right resonance is very uh, your important in electrical engineering uh, it happens uh, your uh, your ac circuit but uh, for single phase uh, single phase analysis it has been done and then uh, whatever maximum power transfer theorem you have studied right that is for dc circuit right so in the case for the case of ac circuit you will also study that maximum power transfer theorem but different than your uh, special cases are there for maximum power transfer theorem and uh, there you will see the difference right so I, I, if I recall correctly, I think I have taken three different, uh, your what you call, uh, uh, three different, uh, uh, is, uh, your what you call, what I will say, cases for your um, uh, maximum power transfer theorem for AC circuit, and this is uh, this is uh, one this is one thing, and uh, these are a little bit of practices necessary, particularly. If, when you are using calculator because computation time increases. So once uh, this uh, single phase circuit is done, then you have your, I think, uh, three phase circuit, right? Because whatever power supply you get at your home, it comes actually from the power plant, that is three phase power generation, until it comes uh, to your residence, right? At that time, uh, your uh, your many commercial places, maybe directly three phase uh, is up, uh, the, the, your consumer side, that your, uh, your three phase power is required for many cases, but at your residence and this, that, uh, mostly it will be your uh, one phase and neutral, right? So uh, three phase circuit also have been explained. And at the beginning that uh, your the four different conditions have considered for three phase and accordingly your phasor diagrams are shown, right? So this will also detail have been explained in that uh, recorded, uh, your what to call recorded version. And three phase, three phase also when we will study that you should concentrate on that uh, phasor diagram, right? The different phasor diagram and different uh, combinations. I mean, I, if I recall correctly, although all versions are not used in uh, in practical cases, but uh, for the sake of our understanding, Delta Delta, star star, star Delta and Delta star, these four options have been taken and accordingly it has been explained, right? So three phase, three phase circuit, when we'll study, you please go through that your power system, uh, this thing, power, uh, your what you call that three phase power computation, right? And now you should compare that how we get uh, for a single phase circuit, that how we compute power and for three phase circuit, right? So this is one thing and power measurement that two watt meter methods have also have been explained. I think uh, I think if I recall correctly, I recorded also for balance load or, and balance supply that how can you measure a reactive power using a watt meter, right? So, and uh, that we want to measure reactive power uh, what meter generally it measures uh, your power, real power, but reactive power by using single watt meter method and how we'll do that for three phase circuit. Of course, balance load and balance supply. That also, if I recall correctly, has been explained and with the phasor diagram also, right? But only thing is that whatever reading you will get from that watt meter, that is your whatever, that your watt meter reading will show, if I recall correctly, VI sin phi or sin theta I have taken, and but you have to multiply it by root three. That means watt meter needs to be calibrated by multiplying a factor of root three, right? So this is uh, your three phase you will, uh, I mean, uh, you will uh, concentrate and whatever it is, whatever power supply today will get from the power plant, actually it's starting from the power plant, it is your three-phase power supply. Or transmission line, you have seen over a transmission line, 
uh, that is basically three phase, right? It is a high voltage, it is a high voltage transmission line, then in different parts, it will be stepped down and maybe industries needs uh, that uh, high voltage power supply like 132 kV, 66 kV or so, right? So this way power transmits and uh, your, uh, after this, if I recall this thing, I think magnetic circuit is there. So magnetic circuit, uh, uh, some thumb rule I have explained, right? And uh, that how to take that plus minus symbol for considering mutual inductance between two coils, right? And the dot convention. Uh, I think regarding this uh, magnetic circuits, uh, I have forgotten now. In the past, I have received a few mails on these magnetic circuit courses. And they have uh, told me that said uh, that explanation is uh, very much understandable for us, right? And uh, these three phase only, only in your, if I recall correctly, uh, that I have uh, taken only two dots, not three dots. Three dots will be more complicated. I mean, complicated in the sense that the computation time will be higher, that uh, all these things have been explained your uh, as much as possible uh, in detail. And starting from the beginning to the end, uh, many numericals have been solved, right? Several numericals have been solved and uh, that is uh, that will actually help you to actually to support the theory. That's why I have taken several examples and um, your uh, and for every whenever any theory is described there I have taken many examples. So these are these are the uh, certain things we have made it. And uh, uh, regarding your, um, again, I'll come to that and regarding DC transient, that maybe it is your, maybe assignment eight or so. I am not, I cannot recall, right? So DC transient, uh, all the all the possibilities have been taken, but uh, AC transient not considered for you. Only DC transients uh, have been taken and all possible thing and detailed uh, derivations for every everything has been explained. And perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, your what you call, you will be, you will be, uh, you know, whenever some theories are there, after that, uh, that uh, may some problems have been solved, right? And that will also, that will also help you a lot. And some typical problems have been taken, such that uh, easy problems are there as well as a uh, little bit of. You know, I mean, uh, whenever whenever you have easy problem, your degree of satisfaction is more. And when you go to a little bit of, you know, in a upper, I mean, upper level, that means slightly difficult problem, the naturally degree of satisfaction will decrease, right? So that's why all sort of uh, all sort of problems have been taken for your understanding. But in addition to that, if I go back, that uh, I think I have covered inductors as well as capacitors their property uh, everything everything has been explained right <laughs> because before going to the dc transient i think those things uh, those things have been explained now when you come to the single phase ac circuit again that whatever whatever uh, your convention you have followed for dc circuit here also when you are applying kcl and kvl you will be you, you know now all these things that you are taking that your same convention and instantaneous polarity, right? And accordingly, you are applying KCL and KVL. But sometimes, uh, sometimes what happens that uh, when you are solving numerical, sometimes one, one is making mistake, uh, particularly in the calculations, right? And that's why uh, your, um, you have to be a little bit of causes that uh, converting from polar to rectangular coordinate and rectangular to polar coordinate, right? So this is one thing and polar rectangular, rectangular polar and several times you have to make it. And you, you and from your high secondary math, you have studied complex number. So that will be very much applicable here, right? And whatever in what and there I have shown that in mathematics, how we have taken and electrical engineering, how you are employing uh, that you're introducing that complex number. Right. So, and uh, more or less, in for the in the case of single phase circuit, actually things are quite easy. 
because you need not much uh, bother about this thing and computation is less as compared to your three phase uh, three phase circuit but whenever we do three phase or whatever analysis has been done in this course that is for three phase balance load balance supply that's why uh, that's why it can be represented by an equivalent single phase but if it is unbalanced then things will be different that is that i think has not been covered in the fundamentals of electrical engineering in this uh, because I have assumed uh, that most of the first year student will take this course, right? So those certain things I have skipped. And uh, apart from apart, apart from this, in uh, three phase uh, circuit, uh, your what you call single phase circuit analysis, that you uh, uh, you can ask that why do you use a single phase uh, power supply? Suppose instead of three phase. So this is a this is a question to you that whether you can find out some practical application of a single phase, right? So it is not, uh, it is uh, your what you call, whether any practical applications are there or not. When what is the, what is the difference between uh, why you have gone for three phase, but not for single phase? What, what are the advantages of three phase uh, analysis or three phase power supply rather over single phase, right? So, uh, so this is the this is the uh, your what you call uh, present state uh, right of that electrical engineering that uh, because of uh, nowadays although uh, maybe many of you have uh, taken this course maybe many of you maybe very first year maybe second year third year students will be there maybe some teachers are also there but nowadays uh, that renewable renewable power sources also getting integrated with the power system like solar wind right um, then biomass also it is a renewable right so diesel generator is uh, diesel apart from that diesel generator is there for the locally it is supplying power but anyway diesel is not a renewable thing right so only solar and wind getting more importance and in addition to that that your what you call that is your batteries batteries are getting more more imp more uh, important thing and as uh, when you listen to this as electrical engineering is uh, changing in many way so one most interesting interesting point of uh, electrical is that that in future that uh, virtual power plant will be coming up right so this is not the pl pl right platform to discuss it but virtual power plant will be very very interesting right so, so somewhere in the world this um, some construction of this uh, virtual power plant is going on right and uh, it will be very interesting and uh, and that is uh, that is your what you call that will perhaps will be very very useful for the future electricity supply so anyway we will come back to this uh, your electrical uh, engineering and uh, your this um, by your uh, fundamentals of electrical engineering and after that you have i think single phase transformer then uh, three phase induction machines right so uh, so transformer is a uh, transformer is uh, there for your what you call uh, every 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 substation or uh, are in your near your house you might have seen that pole mounted distribution transformer right so that is, uh, in in this course only single uh, considering it will be in first year that's why single phase transformer has been covered but not the three phase transformer right uh, and very brief uh, your uh, that's why for, even for single phase transformers uh, a little bit uh, uh, your what to you call uh, of analysis and has been carried out and how that single phase equivalent single phase transformer equivalent circuit has been your what to you call has been made referred to the primary side or referred to the secondary side and how that power and also you have uh, also uh, for uh, electrical engineering later i mean when you are in second third year third year or fourth year that many quantities we convert into dimensionless quantities that is power unit uh, quantities it helps us for computing uh, right and make computation easier so only single phase transformer has been taught in this uh, in this uh, course but not the three phase three phase for the your higher level machine machine course electrical engineering students they learn
But similarly for induction machine also, three phase induction machine also, it is uh, only uh, uh, not much has been covered, very little thing has been covered. And uh, according to that, little bit of equivalent circuit. Uh, so sometimes, uh, sometimes they ask questions that what is the difference between a transformer, I mean, particular an induction uh, machine, three phase induction machine. Right, although induction machine rotates, but transformer is a static device. So they ask this question sometimes in interview or somewhere. Right, so uh, the three phase induction machine, very little had been this thing, but single phase induction machine is beyond the scope. You will learn, uh, you will learn in your, those who are in electrical engineering, they will learn in your, for your what you call in their machine course, machine course, right? And um, and uh, so for all these things that uh, this course, uh, fundamentals of electrical engineering. So uh, whatever has been recorded, I have tried my best to share my uh, whatever notes I had uh, with you. And, uh, and sometimes uh, many, many places uh, they ask for these notes. So many, many teachers also, and sometimes to student also, I have tried to send these notes to this uh, that fundamentals of electrical engineering. So, uh, so and uh, all of them have acknowledged me, sir. We have received this, right? So this is actually, um, I believe that when you will uh, um, listen to this thing, when you will write the exam, and you prepare well and you uh, you will find questions and other things will be very very uh, comfortable and uh, several examples have been solved so if you if you apart from these examples if you open one or two good books on this uh, fundamentals of electrical engineering then they, and some book of course uh, had been referred there those books will be very helpful for you and if you open and just pack this side by side, definitely, definitely you will do well in the exam. Because in this course, Fundamentals of Electrical Engineering, from the past experience, I can tell that students are doing very well, right? Doing very well. So you, you must try and try to try to do well. And I do believe that you, I think, uh, how, I think uh, you, have, you might have submitted your eighth assignment or so. Right, uh, and uh, or you are going to submit, and uh, hopefully that uh, I have not seen that uh, assignments uh, that some graph they give, I have not seen it yet, right? And uh, I do hope that most of you are scoring well or doing well, right? And uh, and uh, till twelve till uh, twelve assignment. You please uh, uh, try to do well. Even even if anybody has, uh, even many of you might have done well up to eight assignment. Uh, but uh, I suggest that up to twelve assignment, you try to submit all the assignment whatever has been given, right? And uh, uh, this is uh, your uh, what you call. Uh, this is from uh, my side. But if you have any questions regarding this. Uh, you can you can mail me anytime. I will I uh, I reply uh, because I am I have found they have not written on the Google spreadsheet, but uh, some of them has uh, sent me mail, and sending mail also. Uh, I think one boy is there that he is asking a few questions and he is asking for some course uh, to be available. Uh, your what you call. Uh, uh, that is, he's asking me that to some course is there, uh, whether uh, it is your what you call, it may not be available in that uh, NPTEL, I do not know, but he's asking, so I am suggesting him that please write to NPTEL uh, to this thing, not to me, because it's a different course, right? But uh, he's, uh, he's, an, he's an electrical engineering boy, right? So he's sending me many mails. And uh, regarding other uh, other aspect that uh, I suggest that uh, little bit of practice is necessary. And finally, uh, this thing, I will say that uh, stay safe during this uh, pandemic situation, right? 
and uh, all the time uh, don't take it anything uh, this thing very lightly every you should be cautious about yourself regarding present situation uh, this covid 19 and uh, and you should try to be safe all the, all the time right uh, so juhi somoji the nibid there is no question no i think there is one question sir uh, what is rms value uh, yeah, they, they please, uh, please uh, uh, tell, uh, tell them that your everything has been defined. Everything has been uh, defined in that in in that note, right? Everything just hold on, just hold on, right? So I think uh, it, I have no, uh, I have uh, no this thing. What to call that whiteboard here? That what is uh, what is RMS value or this, right? So, so uh, it, is, it is actually that root mean square, that is RMS value, depends on your what you call heating effect, that is the square of the current. So that way it is uh, your what you call, that suppose I be the value of the direct current, you please go through my video recording to produce same heating in the same register as produced by alternating current. This way we have defined your what you call that RMS value, right? So uh, just uh, your what to call, it will be RMS value of a sinusoidal current or voltage should be 0.707, that is one by root two to maximum value, right? So root mean square value depends on the heating effect that is square of the current, that is average heating effect proportional to, you have to take you know, every instant of time, like I1 square plus I square you add divided by number of pain. Suppose I be the value of the direct current to produce same heating in the same register as produced by alternating current, then we can write, just you will see that the note, I think, right, that I square is equal to I1 square plus I2 square up to I n square divided by n. So I is equal to square root, uh, square root of that. And finally, it has taken over a time interval and in integrated, but square, uh, square root of that, right? So detail, uh, detail has, has been taken. And, and if you look at that note, there we'll find, I didn't take any sinusoidal representation or anything, some, some symmetrical wave from I have taken. And accordingly, that your R, uh, this way RMS value, they, what to call, we get it. So I, once again, I would like to uh, tell that if I be the values of the direct current to produce same heating in the same register as produced by alternating current, then I square is equal to, just to go through the note, your, sorry, my lecture note, page three, probably page three for single phase circuit, then you will define that I is defined and all derivations, all derivations are given, right? And also note that RMS value, uh, they are at a note, if you see that footnote of that note, you will find that RMS value is always greater than average except for a rectangular wave, right? In which case, the heating effect remains constant so that the average and the RMS value are same, right? This is also at a footnote, it is written there, right? At a footnote, it is written there. Another thing is that, suppose uh, suppose, uh, suppose uh, you have a 220 volt DC and 220 volt RMS AC, then which one you will get more shock, right? Sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, this question is there. They ask that 220 volt AC and 220 volt DC, which one will give you more shock, right? Electrical shock that if you get a shock, then which one will be more? That is a question to you, but I think I have answered during that, uh, during the recording of that course, right? So, uh, so this is the thing, but in AC circuit, we use RMS, RMS value, and I told you that why we do so, right? So, and this is coming uh, over the, your, so, so I mean, since the, your, what you call when, um, I mean, uh, uh, for AC circuit and accordingly, accordingly all um, all measuring devices or the measuring devices or other things are designed, right? So voltage and uh, voltage and your current all we consider RMS value and uh, voltage and another thing I have told during the course that voltage and current are your what you call are phasor quantities. Impedance is not, right? And I explained there why impedance is not 
uh, impedance is a complex number, not a phasor quantity, right? And similarly for power also, it is not a, if you say, sir, what about power, P plus JQ or P minus JQ? So have a look in that, only voltage and current, these two are phasor, uh, phasor quantity, right? So any, any, any other question is there in YouTube? No. Uh, just let me see this. What does the interviewer looks for uh, in a candidate from electrical background? <laughs> this is the question. Uh, what, what, what? What does interviewer looks uh, for in a candidate from electrical background? Hey, I, I, uh, this is, uh, this is, um, uh, this is uh, beyond the scope of, uh, uh, you know, answering anything on this platform. Right, particularly here. But if you if you send me mail, then uh, then uh, I can tell you the experience of the students or uh, others. Right. Uh, so at that time, uh, what employer ask, I can I can tell you. But this is not the right platform. Uh, but uh, many or many or many of your co colleges, engineering colleges, they actually what you call they take some special attention that how we will face the interview, right? They take some special attention and, uh, and for that also, accordingly, they will be groomed for the, uh, facing interviews, right? So this is not the platform, but if you send me mail, I will try to answer that question. But here I will not. Even somebody is writing uh, last time also, somebody wrote uh, two, three times, what are the best book? But at the same time, this is not a platform to, there are many books in the available, uh, right, in the market. So I cannot tell that which book will be the best book. So I should not make such kind of comment. But uh, I can refer many books. You can follow this, follow that. But if some books you may like it, that's very good. Some books maybe you may not, you may prefer other books. So I, from my side, I cannot tell that uh, similar thing that how you'll face the interviews. <laughs> this is not the right platform to tell. Uh, any, anything, any, anything are they writing? No, sir, no more uh, question. No, no more question. So anyway, so once again, I would like to tell that there will be 30 questions of two marks. And that is total 30 into 2, 60 marks, and eight questions of five marks, so 40 marks. So total 100 marks, right? In previous uh, first live session, um, uh, I am just correcting this. I recall that last year thing, but this year questions are no, no one mark question, no questions for one mark, only two mark question, 30 questions and five marks uh, question, eight questions, so total 100 marks, right? So, uh, we, so no other question, and this time also that uh, is, uh, your what you call that. Uh, but anyway, they will go through this uh, YouTube later. Uh, re your recorded thing nowadays, and uh, I didn't get any other questions through email also, right? Only one boy asked me something, but that is that is I am not sure. But he's not there at present today in uh, participating participant list is not there right uh, so with this uh, as no other questions at uh, and no other participant at present so i have to say you very good evening right once again and i have to say thank you very much okay okay sir uh -huh. thank you uh -huh.